trying to have a perfect way to put a kind of conflict in the space. I can take this too. Yes, Mr. Holmes is here for continue. Sometimes, sometimes not. <laughs> sometimes it's just Holmes is here for continued arraignment. Mr. Action had previously been appointed. He's reviewed the matter, says he has a conflict. So I'm going to appoint Mr. Douglas to uh, represent you. Mr. Douglas, this is on for continued arraignment. Do you have a copy of the complaint? Can you just inform me what the charges are? Count one is an 11 5 Yes, Your Honor. Um, she has not checked in with probation since January 24th of 2023. Um, therefore, we're going to make sure she's going to make experience from the spirit. She needs to report to probation or at least contact us. We've had no communication with her. I've been contacted. So, Ms. Ingalls, the indication was you haven't talked with probation since January. Have, have you talked with anybody there? Yes, I have. Who was that? We were talked with the Tim Bennett. Uh, hold on. Ms. Ingalls, who was that, if you recall? Tim Bennett. Mr. Bennett. Yes, and also my husband's attorney, uh, probation officer. Yeah. All right, Mr. Ash. I. Miss Ain't, I, they've been showing up at my dad's house. Your Honor, I, I understand that um, the reason they're in a vehicle and she's not here present is they broke down. Um, and that's why they appeared by Zoom. They contacted me this morning to make sure that they could be here, uh, that she could be here via Zoom. Um, this is the first time hearing about it, so I I, I don't have anything to, to comment here on. Uh, to submit to the court. Mr. Ray, when you were so, Mr. You would, Ms. Ingalls was here in March. I don't recall at her last hearing there was any comments about not reporting since January. Mr. Egan, do you have anything in the people's notes? I just have three fourteen twenty three um, right. defendant um, on supervised release without issues. Uh, she no positive tests. Um, she had some um, injury, mm. um, and um, that's it. Thank you. Right. Any other information, Ms. Sherwood? Your Honor, I will now be the last in-person contact that I have from her officer. It is September 27th of 2022 that the last phone call or email contact between her and her officer was January 24th, 2023. I can't hear all of this. Ms. Ingalls, uh, where are you at right now? We're outside of Delano. We're outside of Delano. Are you in Arizona? No gas. No, we're not in Arizona no more. Thank you. I'm talking to Miss Ingalls. We're Ms. we're in California now. We're no longer in Arizona. Okay. The court had some information. You were in Arizona for a funeral. A funeral. Got my it. mother, my ex, uh, my mother-in-law uh, passed away. So I attended to her funeral in Arizona. That's the information the court was given from the other judge about your husband's situation in behavioral health court. So yes, and I went with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put these matters over Miss Ingalls. I'm going to assume you will be back in Mariposa in a few days, and so I'm going to put all these matters over to Monday. July 24th. Does that work for you, Mr. Action? I'll make it work, Governor. Does that work for the people? Yes. All right. So July 24th at 9 a.m. And Ms. Ingalls, as soon as you get back in town, uh, you're ordered to meet personally with your probation officer. And we'll have Got that it. give us an update. All right. I will. Yeah, right. the 24th, Catherine. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have to. So, yeah, objection, Your Honor. It's not, it's not no relevant. objection, nothing, man. You sir, can't talk sir, over me in the fucking meeting, bro. Sir, sir, sir. Okay, this is the judge, and that is inappropriate language right now. We are live on YouTube. There could be children watching. And if we're in a courtroom... Uh, nah, and, you, and you're on, on mute. Right now. You. I'm going to take it off you. Oh, my God. Right now? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you
Welcome back to Time Serve, the channel that scans the docket so you don't have to. Welcome to the weekend edition, and it is not going to disappoint. I promise you, we have cases from today out of Georgia, Texas, and Michigan. And Jeff also, Stevens is sick and tired of every single defendant that walks into his courtroom, and we will show you why. Tracy Chapman has a fast car and doesn't say much in Thurston County. This person doesn't realize that when you put your hands around someone's neck, that's called strangulation. And then rounding out the rest of the daily docket is Judge Washington, Judge Maya Evans, Judge DeSanto, Simpson, and a couple other surprises. Right. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, set your notifications to all, and never miss the daily docket. Court is now in session. Let's roll, nerds. Ed Nasquale, your name, please. Ma'am, Ed Nasquale, your name. Maybe Ms. Guzman Tucker. Angela Guzman Tucker. <laughs> it also could be Miss Wanjiru. Okay. Yeah, Jane Wanjiru. Uh, <laughs> we don't have a corrections officer in the squally paying attention here. You know, I'd note that on there are two cases here, and on the first one, she was non-responsive with law enforcement, had to be identified um, by fingerprint later. That may be what's going on. Okay, uh, Brenda, will you contact the squally and tell him I want a corrections officer on the camera? Sure. Thank you. In the meantime, we'll go back to uh, Thurston County Corrections Facility. Your name, please. Clifford John. And do we have a corrections officer in with Ms. Wanjiru? Correct. Okay. And is that who that is sitting there? Yes, sir. Okay. Is she alert, awake, choosing not to respond? She's a, she's alert, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Wanjiru, would you mind speaking with me? I am not able to visually confirm. I only spoke to Ms. Wanjiru briefly uh, on the telephone. So if I could hear her voice, I could possibly confirm it. Ms. Wanjiru, this is your attorney, Mr. Michael. And uh, I would prefer not to do that. So if you'll speak with us, we can address your case. But if you won't, it's going to make it difficult to do so. And looks like. Yeah, I'll point out that Ms. Langley was able to conduct an arraignment with her earlier this week. So it's just maybe we set it over to Monday. Ms. Langley will be on that calendar again. Okay. And then, Your Honor, I'd like to add that I was able to provide her the advisement of rights so we can waive the formal advisement of rights. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to give you one more shot, Ms. Wanjiru. Uh, otherwise, it'll mean spending the weekend in the jail until we can get you back before the court with Ms. Langley on Monday. Sounds like you've already presented yourself before the court with her on a, another charge. So anything, would you like to speak with us today? All right. Uh, I'll send out a uh, hold without bail order on the new charge case ending in A bit. All right. Just, thank you. Thank you, Jessica Prieto. Yes, ma'am. The charge you have pending in my court is called animal prohibited transaction. I know what that usually means. That means that you're outside of PetSmart selling puppies. Is that what happened? Um. Well, yes and no. I wasn't outside of PetSmart, but I was in that like shopping area. Like right. PetSmart was over there, and right. I was, like away from it but so the fine range for that that allegation is one to five hundred dollars and the court costs are 76 it's an amarillo code violation to sell pets that way 
Mm-hmm. You want to plead not guilty because you want to hire an attorney, have a trial, or even talk to Miss Denholm today. Um, no, I'll pay the fine. Okay. Do you want to plead guilty or no contest to talk about paying the fine? Yes, that's fine. Which one? Um, no contents. Okay. On your no contest plea, finding court costs is $329. So can you pay that today or do you need time? Yeah, I can pay it today. Okay. So you're now going to be able to go online. And do you see in the chat, it says pay by phone, pay online, go down to your chat. And then you can actually click on that link. Do you have any questions, Ms. Prieto? No, ma'am. What kind of puppies were you selling? Great Dane Bull Mastiff. Oh, my goodness. It's just you've got to have a special permit to sell. Well, home. I was looking for that. So, like, I was looking online, like, because I was in Lubbock beforehand, and they had let me know Lubbock was like, you cannot sell dogs. And I was like, got it. Thank you. That's pretty much and how I am. So I was looking online, and I couldn't find anything. And even still, I was trying to look for a permit or something. And there's, like, nothing online that lets you know. You have to go through the pet stores to sell pets. Okay. Okay. Okay, Ms. Prieto, if you have any trouble going online to pay, then call us or send us an email, okay? Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're free to go. For today is once I call your name, I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask your attorney if they waive formal reading of the warrant. If they waive formal reading, that means that they've gone over the warrant with you. At that, in that case, I will just tell you what the warrant number is and the charge is. And then I will hear from the state's attorney regarding bond. I'll then hear from your attorney regarding bond. And then I will make a decision. So the order that we're going to proceed is first, if the deputies have any request or like me to take anyone first, I will do that. I will then handle any females in the courtrooms. Any males in the courtrooms, I will then move on to any language line cases um, at the very end. Uh, so, Debbie, can we do this, please, Barbara? Yes, we can. Do Miss Sweeney first. You want me first, bitch? But you evil as fuck, and you fucking your daughter's name. All right, Miss Sweeney. You are here today on one warrant. First of all, Ms. Mosley, good morning. Are you um, waiving formal reading of the warrant? Yes, Judge, good morning. And I can waive formal reading for all of my clients. All right, thank you. All right, Ms. Sweeney, you're charged with one count of simple battery of a person over 65 years of age. Your warrant number is 23W014138. Yeah, pretty hard. He actually lacked him. He just lacked a All right, Ms. Uh, Mosley, I'll hear from you. Yes, Judge, thank you. Um, in speaking with Ms. Sweeney, um, it, it was a bit difficult uh, to get information from Ms. Sweeney. Um, she is 29 years old. She is unfortunately unhoused right now. Um, even, even based on the face of the warrant, it seems like this was something that happened in the midst of a mental health crisis, which seems to be ongoing. Um, she was able um, to- due to essentially due to sexual assault that she has PTSD for. Um, so I think all of that is kind of culminating into this mental health crisis. Um, but this, I do want to point out, this is not family violence. This was a, a paramedic. Um, I think in Odyssey, it was showing family violence. Um, but your honor, just in light of her circumstances, she has absolutely no resources to her name. She needs to be on her medication, which she indicated that she does take on the outside, but she she said the only medication she's gotten in the jail was a sedative. Um, so we would just ask you to consider a UJR here in light of those circumstances. All right, and who's representing the state this morning? Oh, Ms. Marsh, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. Thank you. Um, the state would ask for a $1,000 bond in this case, given the seriousness of the accusation that um, the paramedic uh, was trying to assist the accused. Um, he is also an elderly, uh, an elderly man. All right. 
But this time, I am going to follow the state's recommendation. I'll set a bond in the amount of $1,000. There will be a special condition to stay away from the named victim and the warrant. Um, I don't anticipate that being a problem. And I will not state his name as I'll ask everyone not to state the name of victims um, today out loud as we are being streamed live on YouTube. If you can just use initials, um, that I would appreciate that. All right, Ms. Sweeney, your bond is set at $1,000. You're to have no contact with the named alleged victim in the warrant, okay? And at this time, if sign the special conditions and you can follow directions of the deputy, your hearing's concluded. All right. I think that was the only female in the courtroom. Thank you, child of God. The devil works. Okay. Let's move to she's signing up. Yeah. I texted Millie. Thank you. Come on, let's go. And Millie means three born to her. And now position two, uh, it's not two. The first case on the calendar I have is. I apologize, Jess, but were you able to sign Miss Sweeney's? You know what? I just just blanked on that. Let me go ahead and do that. Thank you. Lanny International Drive. It's Lanny Township, Washington County, State of Michigan. Uh, count one: You did make an assault upon Robin Noble by strangulation or suffocation. A felony carrying a maximum penalty convicted up to 10 years incarceration, a $5,000 fine, or both. Do you understand that? Regulation? Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, okay. I, I, didn't know I, I didn't know I strangled her, but okay. Just a yes or no question. It, it, yeah, it's, yeah. Understand it, not, not Yes, I understand, yes. Okay. All right. Count two, you did willfully and maliciously prevent, obstruct, or delay by any means the sending, conveyance, or delivery of an authorized communication by or through a telephone or telephone line, uh, and the uh, incident to be reported resulted in, in, in the injury uh, to Robin Nobles, a felony carrying a maximum penalty of convicted of up to four years incarceration, a $5,000 fine, or both. Do you understand that? Uh -huh. Yes. I got, yeah. so, so, so in simpler terms, you prevented her from making a phone call. Not at all. No. Well, no. Again, again, I'm not asking if you did or didn't do it. I just want to right, make sure right. you understand the, these are allegations. You are presumed innocent until proven guilty. Uh, but I will caution you not to say anything here on the record that might be detrimental to your case moving forward. So, again, the only question I'm asking is you understand it, not if you agree with I it. Understand. Okay. Thank you. Count three. You did make an assault or assault and battery upon Robin Nobles. That is a misdemeanor charge alleging uh, car carrying a maximum penalty of convicted of up to 93 days in jail, a $500 fine, plus court costs, or both. Do you understand that? Yes, I understand. Okay. So court needs to advise you certain rights with regard to felony charges. You do have the right to remain silent. And you say on the record, can it would be used against you at trial. You have the right to be represented by an attorney at all stages of these proceedings, including before, during, after trial, and at any time you're being questioned by a police officer. If you're unable to afford an attorney, one will represent you at public expense. Do you understand those rights? Yes. The court has entered a not guilty plea as to all counts. People may address bond. Thank you, Your Honor. Ashley Lundy for the people. At this time, people are requesting no contact and no go-to. We're requesting no contact with the alleged victim as well as no contact with the co-defendant, Davey and Copeland, or David Copeland, excuse me. And um, I, I think it's important for the court to note that the defendant does have a pretty lengthy criminal history. Uh, and the concern here is the nature of this assault and the prevention of the victim from contacting 911. So I would leave any financial bond within the discretion of the court. I just wanted to make sure the court was aware of all those things. Thank you. All right. Public defender. What's your honor? Um, we're just asking for a personal bond here with those no contact and no go to conditions. I did want to note that the um, no go to is not on the international drive. On the bond form, um, the International Drive address is where Ms. Nobles lives. Um, Robin, who's her sister, and um, Davin Copeland, who is her sister's boyfriend, do not live there. Um, so it, that's where she'll be staying. Um, she, I did also want to note that I don't believe, uh, based on what I've seen, that she has any assaultive history. 
Um, and she she is an Ypsilanti resident. She's currently completing schooling to become a medical assistant. And she has an almost two year old daughter that she's got full custody of that she uh, really is worried about getting back to. So, again, we're just asking for a personal bond with those uh, no contact, no go to conditions. Ms. Lundy, uh, for Mr. Copeland's case, uh, you requested it not to go to international with Ms. Nobles. You requested it not to go to, I believe, it's Scenic Drive. Um, so I'm trying to, to understand the, the difference between the two no go tos. Yes, um, Mr. Copeland's case should also include the Scenic Lake Drive. The okay. Scenic Drive is Robin Nobles' address, is my understanding, and the International Drive is Raven Nobles' address. Okay, so we Raven should not be having contact with this co defendant and should not be going to her house, and she should not, and uh, Ms. Raven Nobles should not be going to Robin Nobles' address on Scenic Lake Drive. Okay, so. Raven can go back to the international. Everybody else has got to stay away. That was, is that what we've got to ascertain? Very succinct. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. All right. Ms. Nobles, do you have yes. a medical marijuana card? No, I don't. Do you own any firearms? Not at all. Okay. Condition of bond is as follows. You are not to use or possess alcohol, illegal drugs, or marijuana. You will be subject to random drug and alcohol testing. You are not to leave the state of Michigan without permission of the court. You are not to possess or purchase a firearm, ammunition, or other dangerous weapon. You are not to commit any assaultive, terrorizing, frightening, intimidating, threatening, harassing, molesting, or stalking behavior towards any individual. Uh, you are not to have contact with either um, the alleged victim, identified as uh, Robin Nobles, or with David Copeland. This means absolutely no contact, no indirect contact with your family or friends, no text, message, email, social network posting, telephone contact, or any contact of any sort. You're not to go to either of those places for individuals, uh, places of uh, residence or employment. You're not to violate any criminal laws. And of course, you are to personally appear to all court here, or not you're to appear to all court hearings and other places as directed by the court. Do you have any questions regarding any of these conditions? No. Okay, these conditions will be placed in what is called the Law Enforcement Information Network, meaning should you come into contact with the police, they would have access to that information. Should they witness or suspect a bond violation have occurred, you would be arrested for violating your bond. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Uh, to monitor for the use of drugs, alcohol, or marijuana, you will be subject to random drug and alcohol testing. Uh, before community corrections closes on Monday, you need to report there for your first drug test. Do, do you know where they're located? Um, it's about the one over here. Um, Clark, right? I think. No, no. downtown Darby? No, no, right across the parking lot from where you are right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I know where it is. Yeah. Okay. All righty. So when you go up there, you need $12 and a photo ID. Ms. Lonnie, you indicated on behalf of the people that the Ms. Uh, Nobles had a lengthy criminal history. I see uh, two misdemeanor charges, both dismissed. Is there uh, additional information you had beyond that? Yes, may I have a moment? Yep. Yeah. Oh, no, that's my mistake, Your Honor. I'm sorry. Okay. Too many files this morning. I apologize. That's okay. That's all right. Okay. Let me get you a court date here. So I will get a, a personal release today. I'll get to that in a second. Okay. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Your next court date is what's called a probable cause conference, August 31st, 9 a.m. via Zoom. Uh, if the matter is not resolved in that hearing, it does proceed to what's called a preliminary examination. That is a hearing at the point in time the prosecutor uh, needs to present sufficient evidence and or testimony that there is probable cause, crime is committed, probable cause, you did commit the crime. Should the judge presiding over that hearing determine that probable cause does exist, the matter would be bound over, meaning transferred to a circuit court for trial. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay, that court date is initially scheduled for September 5th. Although no. Okay. And, uh, um, okay, you're all set for today. It's going to take a few hours. Dates. When the public defender calls you to talk about to identify, are you pleading true voluntarily, knowingly, intelligently, and because those allegations are true? Yes, sir. Do you understand by pleading true that is enough to grant these motions to revoke probation? Your probations can now be revoked uh, and you can be sentenced up to two years in state jail for 21276 and up to 10 years for 36584. Yes, sir. Knowing that, do you insist on pleading true today? Yes. I find you are pleading true uh, voluntarily. You understand and appreciate the consequences of pleading true. Well, the hitch in this giddy up, as it, they used to say, 
the real issue is we've got a lot of money in uh, arrearages of fees. And my question is, how much of that is restitution? In each case? Well, two one two one seven six to restitution in the beginning was sixteen thousand three hundred thirteen dollars. This means on probation, you only, you only she uh, the defendant only has paid four hundred ninety dollars, and at this time she owes fifteen thousand eight hundred fifteen dollars forty six cents. There's no restitution on the other case. No, uh, restitution. I'm sorry. Is she owes how much? Fifteen thousand eight hundred fifteen dollars and forty six cents. Is that is that the balance that started off at nineteen thousand? That's what he said. I think that, that's no, it's fifteen thousand. That's on. It's yeah, but there's 16, other fees. Start off at sixteen. This is I. It's just this is just what's restitution. Mm -hmm. There are other court fees, yeah. probation fees that have accrued that she's not paying either. But I'm more interested. I'm interested in all the fees because that's important because. They're being expended to help her succeed in probation, and here she is mm -hmm. failing probation. But restitution, nobody gets a break with this court if you if you got restitution that you didn't pay. You're not going to get a break because those people are going to say, why would she get a break? Uh, she did something, cost us money, and she's not paying it, but you're letting her you're letting her, uh, like, for instance, the burglary, you're looking at up to 20 years in prison on that one. But we capped it at 10 on the regular probation, which was what we had to do to provide you the opportunity to fix this, which you really haven't done. But you've been on probation for now over two years on one case, mm -hmm. and it's not seeming to really work real well so what is the state saying what do you think judge when i looked at how little she's paid and i don't think she has the means to pay for a while how much time does she have credit for please three months mm -hmm. She's been working. No. Well, tell me about for, well, the probation office. Help me out. From your perspective, you see her uh, better than uh, anybody. So uh, I've been seeing this. Mr. Mr. Perry, tell me, can you summarize where you feel like the direction should be we had? Well, she has been given opportunities. She's Committing new offense while new felony offense while on probation. This yeah. offense is a what? It's a misdemeanor, is it not? Is I mean, it's a it's a crime. Is it a misdemeanor? I thought it was figured ID. The figured ID, yes, the figured ID is a misdemeanor. Uh, what level is it? I, I should know, but we just. Yeah, I, I would, yes, is it class B? Mm -hmm. Yeah, figured ID. Well, and, but it's still a crime. But it's, right. don't commit a crime. It's the very first thing. And, and, and Judge, if you remember, we I had requested a bond hearing on this case, and that was part of what I had argued at the bond hearing was, is that she's accepted the possibility for that. What happened was that she had some traffic tickets. I'm just, I just just keep it. She had. No, she, no, that's not what she tried. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is, is that what what happened was, is that she had traffic tickets, and she didn't have the money to pay the tickets, and she knew that she was going to go to jail. Yeah. So she why. handled it dishonestly. Yes. No, no. You're right. I'm not. Oh, okay. Well, none of that. Is, I, I'm. I'm not happy about and the, that. The interesting right. thing is, is the names that she gave had warrants for their arrest, so <laughs> she ended up getting arrested anyway. Okay, but but it once you tried it to deceive, it that that's what happened. But no, it wasn't as though she went got on the felony off. It it she made a bad decision. I mean, she had traffic tickets. She had it. She knew she couldn't. How much did you say this time? I, I'm working on it, Judge. I uh, I have to go to a couple different places to look now. <clears throat>
we've got the new system that's uh, modernized and <laughs> and is far more complex. That is true. Funny. Progress. Pro I, I, progress backwards. It's not broken off its if she has about three months credit. On both cases? On the criminal mischief. Burglary. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, the criminal mischief. That's only three months. Yes, sir. The burglaries about the same judge about three months. What are you suggesting, Stay? You're going to pay that restitution one way or the other. Uh, but you, you also may go to prison for a while, too. Well, there's not air conditioning. On the criminal mischief, we extended that. Was that continued? Yes. That far, I don't have access to. Okay. The criminal mischief is the state jail, but it has huh? the arrears, but but it has the fifteen thousand dollars restitution that's sitting out there. Yeah. We did the two or five and twenty yeah. dollars that was appointed from the first adjudicator. Well, just since I offered her the, the two years on the burglary, we could send her on the burglary since the criminal mischief is holding her up on that. She's on my watch now, though. Yes, sir. I, I don't like that. It's just, it's, and truly, little has been done except you've made more of a mess. Why not 10 years in prison and two years? Why not? Well, People don't get paid, but she's not helping the community and herself. She's making a mess while on probation. I think that if the court would consider allowing her to continue on probation, I think the message that, that she's hearing in the courtroom today is going to be a real big message for her to uh, do right. Well, well, I thought we tried to impress her the, when we placed her on probation. Well, I think that yeah. uh, because what was it? It was deferred. Okay. And then we, she was first placed on deferred in 15. Mm -hmm. And then in 2021, we put her on two over five, I think. Mm -hmm. She got extended. Right and she, she can only serve 10 years unless there's a motion file. But I think that since all of that, mm -hmm. and like I say, the, the reason, the main reason we brought it in is that they got an ID. And like I said, I'm not justifying it, but the circumstances. Can we, mm -hmm. can we uh, uh, apply restitution from one case to another? Transfer it. Yes, we can by agreement if they want. Why he's looking at that, what I was going to say is, is that one of the things that she did positively in separating herself from other people is I think since this is happening, she did earn her uh, high school diploma, right? Right, and that and that's a positive for that. When I, I think she had the all. When did that order? When did you get the diploma? Two thousand. Was it two thousand two? Because I know one of these cases is thereafter she commits a crime. Right, but I think that first one was fifteen. Two thousand fifteen, I believe, and I think she gets that in twenty twenty. I know, but 
After that, she commits this crime she just pleaded true to in December. Right. That's not showing education sense. And, and in addition to that, she also had uh, went, took college courses that I was aware of. Okay. How long has she been in jail here rec this last time? 59 days. And she has a total of how much? About three months. Um, uh, previously on the criminal mischief. How's that working out for you in days? jail? Ma'am? It's not comfortable. It's, it's jail. It's, it's I know. Jail. And life is passing you by. Yes, in sir. the free world, we're all doing our things and making better of ourselves. And meanwhile, you're stuck in neutral. Right, and I think in those 59 days when her three children had come to visit her in the jail, she has three kids, I think that kind of broke her down. What do you, okay, what do you plan to do to impress the heck out of me? So I don't stick it to say, I, this is, it's this simple. This, this is all of this. Your probation is revoked, period. You were hereby sentenced to confinement in the state jail for blank and in prison for blank. Two sentences. That's all there is left. Would that take 10 seconds? Yes, sir. But I'm not impressed. You've had a lot of time to pay this stuff, this restitution back, and these people are going to get paid or else you're going to pay for it one way or the other. And but so what did you what can you do? Judge, I would ask you to just throw uh, throw a Hail Mary pass on this case. And here's what I mean by that. Those, the, the, yeah, the chances of completion are, are low. Right, but, but the reward is tremendously high because it's a touchdown. So what I would say is, is that in this particular case, the, the touchdown and the high risk. I don't know. What are we going to do about it? That's what it? I was going to say. If Let's you, don't dance in the end zone yet. What do you, how are you going to pay it back? I if do, you were released, I oh. do work. I, what, what do you do? I, I work at La Quinta in front desk. Um, okay, okay. Well, how much do you? How much do they pay you? How it, much are you? If you go back to your job, mm -hmm. how much can you pay a month toward this restitution in these cases? About five hundred a month. All right. Here's what we're gonna do. Children. I'm gonna hold you to that. Yes, sir. I'm going to find that there is sufficient evidence supporting uh, these motions to revoke probation, to grant them by a preponderance of the evidence, or alleg by, because allegation one has been proven true by a preponderance of the evidence or, or greater. I am going to uh, defer a further finding on this motion. Continue your probation. I will modify the terms of probation in 21276 in that you shall pay a minimum of $500 per month to be applied toward the restitution. No, Mr. Pence. And it's yeah. got to show me something other than, there we go. All right. Ms. Hill, can you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Yeah. State your name for the record, please. Hi, Kyra here. All right, you can put your hand down. Ma'am, it is the court's understanding that you are going to be pleading guilty to the charge of retail fraud second degree. That is a misdemeanor punishable by up to one year incarceration, a $2,000 fine plus court costs. The fine could be increased to three times the value of the property taken. If that's greater than $2,000, that would become the maximum fine. You understand that, ma'am? Yeah. Understanding that, do you still wish to plead guilty? Yeah. And to that charge, how do you plead? Guilty. Now, you understand that by pleading guilty, you'll not have a trial of any kind. Right. Yes. Because of that, you're giving up certain rights. You're giving up your right to call witnesses to speak for you at trial or to have this court compel their attendance. 
You're giving up your right to see, hear, and question all witnesses against you at trial. You're also giving up your right to be a witness for yourself or to remain silent, not have that silence used against you. And you're giving up your right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You understand that, ma'am? Yes. You understand you're giving up your right to appeal of right? Yes. Are you on probation or parole? No. Has anybody promised you anything other than what's been stated here today on the record to get you to plead to this charge? No. Anybody threaten you or coerce you? No. You're doing this voluntarily? Yes. Of your own free will? Yes. And because you believe that you're guilty of this offense? Yes. March 27, 2022, at the location of 7000 East Michigan Avenue, Was Pittsfield Township, Washington County, State of Michigan, what did you do at the Walmart that makes you think that you're guilty? Walked out with unscathed things. You'll have to say that again, ma'am. Walked out with unscathed things. Okay. Did you go, you got some items from inside Walmart and tried to walk out of the store without paying for them? Yes. Was the total amount of the items that you walked out with or attempted to walk out with, was that in excess of $200? Um, sure, I guess so. Counsel, do you stipulate that the amount of the value of the property she tried to take was in excess of $200? Yes, Your Honor. Ma'am? Was the store yes. open to the pub? Was the store open to the public at the time that you did this? Yes. Did you have anybody's permission from Walmart to take that property? No. And the property you took was property that they had offered for sale. Yes. Counsel, have I complied with the court rule? Would it be proper to accept this defendant's plea? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Court will accept the defendant's plea of guilty. To this charge, it's five, right? Never mind. Defendant is referred to probation for pre-sentence investigation and report and consideration of Haida sentencing in. Robert Horton, two three three zero seven, and appearance counsel. Attorney Corey Westmoreland appearing on behalf of Mr. Horton. Mr. Horton, would you please unmute yourself and state your name for the record? How you doing? My name is Robert Horton. All right. Good morning. Good morning. So this is the date scheduled for sentencing on your client's plea for malicious destruction of property. And sir, did you have you been fingerprinted yet? Yeah, I had went the day that I, the day after I had court last time. So I believe the twenty third last month. Okay. All right. And so March 23rd? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. And so, Counselor, do you have the opportunity to review the report and recommendation? I did, Your Honor. And at this time, I'd simply just be requesting that the uh, recommendation be adopted on behalf of Mr. Horton. Uh, with with uh, the understanding, uh, I believe it's, uh, uh, yes. Yeah be taken under advisement under 771.1. Yeah, the court will indicate that after review of the report, the recommendation that um, there's reasonable grounds to part MCL 769.5 and that Mr. Horton is eligible under 771.1. And is there anything else you'd like the court to know, Mr. Horton? No, I apologize for the incident, but I have another question. Is there a way if I could just pay for the damages and don't have to do the probation or I have to do the probation or whatever is going on? Well, 
Well, sir, um, the court does find there's reasonable grounds to depart from CL 769.5. So there's a couple of things that the court would like for you to um, complete while you're on probation. And the recommendations for 12 months is that you are eligible for leave discharge and you could apply for discharge in six months. All right. Okay, but I'll go over that in just a few moments. All right. All right. And um, the court's going, counsel, anything else before I go into the condition? Not at this time, Judge. All right. The court's going to indicate 12 months probation. And as I did indicate, you are eligible for early discharge. The court will go over that shortly. You are also eligible under 771.1 Senate. You're not to violate any criminal law in the government. You're not to leave the state without the consent of the court. You are to report truthfully to a probation officer as long as often as your probation officer may require, whether in person, in writing, or virtually. You're also to notify your probation officer immediately when you change an address or employment status. You have to be alcohol or drugs must prescribe to be subjected to random testing. The very guilty of both of that condition, sir, so the court can monitor your progress and maintain the absence of sobriety. If I recall correctly, wasn't there a party at the community center there in Riverview? And there was a yeah. Yeah, it was a party and it turned out into something else. And what? I said it was a party and then it turned out to be a a big disagreement. Right. I believe there are a couple other individuals that were uh, in front of me for something from that as well. Right. Correctly. Okay. All right. The court's going to also indicate for you to participate in the chemical awareness program, the rehabilitative goal for that condition is to further educate you about drug and alcohol use so you can make better informed decisions in the future and hopefully prevent this matter from occurring again. The court's going to indicate restitution in the amount of $795 received in the city of Riverview. Do you have any reason to dispute that amount? No, that's cool. Okay. I believe that that was just because there was a it was broken glass on the door or something. Yeah, it was already shattered and broke. Like, so I really ain't do too much damage. I just kicked it a couple of times, but it was already shattered and broke. And I had on dress shoes, so I really ain't do nothing. Okay. Well, in any event, you're the one that finished it off, I guess. Right? Uh... I wouldn't say I'll finish it off, but I guess. Okay. But well, you're not disputing the amount of $795. Is that what I got to pay? Or what, what I have to pay? Yeah, that's what, that's what the cost was to replace the damage. All right. No problem. Okay. And the court's going to also indicate five days in the court workforce. The rehabilitative goal for that condition it's how you further develop work and life skills and get back to the community. Any questions regarding the terms and conditions? Uh, do you know what days that would be? Because I do work. You can schedule those around your work day, sir. All right. Is the weekend included? I believe so, yes. All right. Okay. Okay. Any other questions regarding the terms and conditions before I get to the fines and costs? No, nah, no. All right, three hundred dollars fine. Screening fine. Three one hundred dollars screening assessment fee. Six hundred dollars supervision oversight fee. That's fifty dollars a month at twelve months. And since you are eligible for early discharge, some of that money may not be due. Two hundred dollars for the cost of prosecution. Crime victim assessment fee of seventy-five dollars. Justice system assessment fee of fifty dollars. Workforce two hundred dollars. It's five days at forty dollars a day. And the chemical awareness program seventy-five dollars. Which was sixteen hundred dollars plus the restitution of seven hundred ninety-five dollars for a total of two thousand three hundred ninety-five dollars. Twenty-three hundred. Yes, just under twenty-four hundred. Yes. And do you have any money that you can pay today? Uh, I could probably make that. I can make three, but you all that add up to twenty-three hundred for. That's a lot of money for that. But well, I, let, me, let, me, let me recalculate. Maybe I was wrong. Just a moment. So, no, the fines and costs total $1,600 plus the $795 in restitution, $2,395. 
Yeah, I ain't saying you was wrong. I was just saying that's a lot. But it ain't it ain't no big. I can handle it. Okay. So how much are you able to pay today? I could uh, I could pay that three hundred, three hundred. Okay. And then on the balance of two thousand ninety five dollars, how much can you take per month, and what day of the month works best for you? Uh, I could probably two hundred, probably two hundred a month. Okay. What day of the month works best? Uh, the middle, the middle of the month. Okay, so can you begin that May seventeenth? Yeah, May seventh. Yeah, May seventeenth. Cool. Okay. All right. So we're gonna have you email in the probation so they can get you set up in your terms and conditions, and then I'm going to indicate. $300 today, the balance of $2,095 will be paid at a rate of $200 per month beginning May 17th. As I did indicate, you are eligible for early discharge as long as all the following have occurred. You've completed at least half of your original summer probation. All probation requirements have been completed. You've had at least three months without any violations and all money have been either paid in full or you've made good faith effort toward making full payment. Okay? All right. All right. Good luck to you, sir. Please email in the probation by 1030 today, okay? Thank you, Judge. All right. Oh, did you have another question? Yeah, I was about to say, you said I have to email them? Yeah. All right. What do I have to email them? What, do I pay me? You're going to email them your name, and then they're going to contact you so they can get you set up with, your, with all of your instructions, okay? All right. All right. I'm going to text you the email address. All right, right cool. All right, that's cool. All right. All right. Good luck, you, sir. Have a good day. All right, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Walker, could you state your name for the record, please? Uh, Yuli Walker. Hello, Mr. Walker. How you doing, Judge? I'm okay. That's good. All right, you're supposed to be here for sentencing today. Apparently, we've already gone over the fact that you were denied into the veterans program. And we haven't heard from you since the last court date. Is that correct? Was I supposed to hear from you? You're supposed to be reaching out to probation at least. No, I haven't got any instructions for any of that. I just lost one before by the court to be clean. Are you testing? Yes, I am. Okay. Yep. Ms. Straub, are you present? Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Could you uh, please look up community in community corrections and see what his test results show? Looking right now. Yeah, it looks like he's been testing consistently. They are all positive for THC. And then there's, I don't know if it's already been addressed since I, I believe he's been back here since May 17th, but there's a positive cocaine from yes. 5 9 and 5 17. But otherwise, he's just positive for THC. Yeah, we've addressed those things. All right, so, you know, we're here trying to get you sentenced still. Yes. Yeah, yeah I thought I was getting sentenced today. Well, the problem is mm -hmm. that you haven't had the substance abuse evaluation done. Well, I'm oh, still yeah. I'm still in the veterans program. You're still in the veterans program, but yeah, we don't at the, know, at the, have you signed the release of information so that information can go to probation? Okay, yes. I, I have a group every I have a group every Thursday morning. That's not my that you didn't answer my question. Oh oh yes, that's good. Have you signed the release of information so that, that can go to probation? Um I signed some paperwork when I first got there. And I gave him, I gave him my uh, card to, I gave a card from the community corrections to the counselor that I see. So I thought they would call it. I didn't know what else I had to sign or do. If there's a form I got to sign, I'll go do it. Yes, you got to go to probation and sign a form. Well, I signed one at um, Mr. Kenneth's office or something. Who? 
the, the probation i went to a probation officer signed a bunch of paperwork that was through um ken ashenfelter is the probation officer for veterans court judge that's, oh, where, yeah. okay. that's okay. where the okay. confusion yes, so I, I don't know any other people I, I'm supposed to sign. wherever i go i go do it you come back to court here and come, oh, come back yeah. okay okay i'll do that you're on i'll do that yeah. i'll do that he should be able to sign a release directly with the VA for them to release information to me. Okay. Okay. So, so just go ask them. Yes, you can do that. I, okay. the reason I suggested go to probation also is because the VA is very slow with everything they, that they do. Man, um, so, they are. I was going to be well. So I'm not far from the courthouse right now. Okay. Well, so I'll come there and do it. So you need to do both. To be okay. 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 Um, sign with them and then sign with yeah uh, probation because they are weird about having their own forms on file, but then they'll okay. let them sit in the sit yeah, wherever sure. they sit and do nothing about it. So if she has the form also that she sends over, she can at least say I I have this form, and you should have one in your file, which might expedite things. Okay. Cool. I only know because of my own experiences right now with some other matters with the VA. Okay. Um pretty really slow but i am I, I i've been consistent with my meetings um my appointment, i have a doctor's appointment today at one o'clock um but i'm consistent with va right now so right. and what we want to have done is a, a substance abuse evaluation that you have to go uh so you need to be in contact with probation so that they can um, have a separate one done i know you're in the va but we have our separate process that you have to do also okay okay cool cool I'm going to adjourn it six weeks so all these things can happen. If okay. they haven't happened, then the next recommendation is remand. So you got to get those things done. Okay. No, I'm going to do I will do that. All right. So we'll see you on um, September 6th. September 6th. Okay. Okay. Your Honor. Yes. Is it possible for um, me to go into a breakout with Mr. Walker so I can give him that assessment information now? Absolutely. Okay, I, I do I need a pen to write this down, ma'am? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, you will. Let, let me get let me get a pen so I can write that information. Backpack. Okay. Yes, we're gonna put you good in. morning, ma'am. Please tell the court your name. Shanika McGowan. Miss McGowan, please start your video. I know, I'm trying to figure this. Okay. Miss okay. McGowan, what time did you think you had to come to court today? Um, I don't know. Actually, my mother um is out of town, and the attorney sent all the information to my mama. So my mother just texted me. No, no, nobody had to send no information, ma'am, because you, we, 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 you, you got your, you. <laughs> You, I didn't you, get anything. She don't have a. I don't have a phone. She takes it through my we, mother's phone. We. I don't care nothing about an, a lawyer or a text. I'm talking about the notice that the court sent to you. Furthermore, you a grown woman, ma'am. And I didn't get a notice. Now, who are you talking to? I mean, what? Why just explain to you that I didn't no, get no, a no, 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 no. Who are you talking to? I didn't get a notice. Who? Who? Who are you talking to? So first of all, you're very late for court. It would be it would benefit you to be very humble, contrite, and respectful. Because a warrant was getting ready to go out for your arrest. Number two, this is the second scheduling of your matter. The first time we didn't issue a warrant for your arrest. But what you need to do is come to my courtroom respectful not two hours late make sure that the court has your address because it's not our issue if your mail is going to your mother's house now i don't have to hear your case today and the way that your your attitude i may decide not to but i'm going to send you to the breakout room so you can speak with the lawyer if you don't know how to come to court on zoom if you don't know how to be respectful on zoom then maybe you need to show up in person. But you're not mm -hmm. going to come on my court and disrespect me. 
When I woke up this morning, I didn't say, oh, I'm excited to go to work so that the people can disrespect me. Please accept mm -hmm. to join the breakout room and a lawyer will come in to speak with you. Thank you, ma'am. And I wasn't trying to be disrespectful, but by the way. But you did without any effort. You, you were disrespectful oh. without any effort. Okay. Yeah, okay. Here we go again at 1039. The, um, all right. Your Honor. Yeah. I'm updating the Geno Johnson uh, amended order now. I think I see what went wrong. Williams, state your name, please. Raymika Williams. Okay. And um, you heard me recite to the court um, the agreements between you and Mr. Robinson Jackson. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And um, those are your agreements, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you believe that those um, those terms of the order would be in the best interest of your children? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you're asking the court to approve those terms of the order? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I would like to pass the witness and call Mr. Robinson Jackson. Um, sir, state your name, please. Oh, my name is James Jackson. Okay, so you don't you don't go by Robinson Jackson, sir? Do you go? I don't know which other one y'all got up in the system. Okay, okay, thank you. And you heard me recite to the court um, the agreements between you and Miss Miss Williams. Is that correct? Well, uh, yes. And are, and are those your agreements? I don't know. I need to talk to somebody uh, like uh, furthermore, but I don't want to be a disruption. Like you said, I was being disruption. I don't want to be a disruption. Yes, I need to talk to somebody furthermore. Okay. Um, so you don't agree that you should have the standard possession and access order? Yes, I do. But I have a lot of Okay, I'm just agreements too. Okay, what we're doing right now, sir, is just discussing, just just reciting to the court what you and Miss Williams agreed to. We're gonna have a hearing on all the other issues if, if that's okay with you. Okay. Okay. All right. And sir, do you agree to the exchange at the Mesquite Police Department? Um we can meet anywhere, but yes, ma'am. Okay. And you also agree that Miss Miss um, Williams should be ordered to um to apply for the government medical plan is that correct i need that i don't know i don't trust him man. i think i should do i don't trust him at all my kids are already on medication okay, so wait one second i don't need to be wait, 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 no wait guys wait guys no, i know what's up with me boy one second no one's to talk over no. the other party and he's the witness <laughs> so ma'am do not interrupt Excuse me. Okay, so when I can interrupt anyone because it's my courtroom, so I don't want the mother to interrupt your testimony while you are testifying. Okay, uh, you may proceed. Okay, so, sir, um, you agree that Miss Williams will enroll the children in the government medical plan? Is that correct? No, I don't think she should be doing anything with my children, man. All right. Okay, pass the witness, Your Honor. If I can just proceed with the with the trial in this case. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm gonna recall uh, Miss Williams. Um, so Miss Williams has there been a um any incidents of family violence in the past um two years between you and Miss? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, and, and one second, Miss Hood. Miss Williams, are you the only one with the children right now? Um, it's done with me, yes, ma'am. Okay, and you're not able to go into a quiet area for this hearing. Uh, I could ask somebody to sit in the room with me, yes. Okay, I'm gonna need you in a quiet area so I can hear your testimony. I think she froze, Your Honor. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I wouldn't put it for All right, go ahead, Miss. All right. Um, so when was the last um incident of family violence? Um re recently in February on Valentine's Day, he came up to my job and made a big scene and had to get arrested. So oh, he was arrested. Okay. Was did he um was there a physical violence? He physically hit one of my coworkers, but he didn't hit me because I wouldn't come from the back. And was there a restraining order put in place? Yes, ma'am, a protection order for me and my children and my family members that live with me. Is it still in place? 
Um, it might be, but I think it's supposed to end sometime in May. I'm supposed to go up there and redo it. Okay. Now, does Mr. Um, Jackson know where you live? Yes, ma'am. Like, let's back up. Was okay, he was, was he arrested? Yes, ma'am. And why did he hit the coworker? I didn't hit because nobody. Judge. I didn't hit nobody. Judge. I didn't hit nobody. Mr. Jackson, nobody judge. Mr. Jackson, I'm gonna put you on mute. I'm asking her questions. We're going to ask you the same questions. You're going to be able to tell me your side of it. She said, that's what happened. I have follow-up questions. Questions will be asked of you. Miss Williams. Yes, ma'am. Why, why was the coworker hit? That's what you're saying. They tried to get him to exit the building. Like they tried to get him to leave. I guess he came in saying harsh things and my boss tried to get him to leave and it made a big scene. Okay, were there any other incidents of family violence between you and him? Um, since then, I have been in no contact with him. But no, not, one not time. since then, before then, before February the 14th. Uh, before then, it's always just uh, minor threats, things that he say, stuff that he say he going to do. But he never has contact with me, ma'am, no. Has he ever threatened to hurt you or the children? Me all the time, never my children. Okay. Have you ever threatened to hurt him? Uh, physically, I okay, don't Mr. Really Jackson, know. stop. I'm going to ask you the same questions. Stop and calm down. Have you ever threatened to harm him? Uh, no, I've never physically uh, told I didn't him. I didn't ask you physically. Him. You got to listen to the questions, guys. Don't no, I said I each other. You got to listen. A threat and physical, two different things. I asked you, have you ever threatened to harm him? No, ma'am. I was saying I never threatened to physically harm him. Okay. Threaten him at all? Any threat? Yes. Probably saying stuff back. Yes, ma'am. Yes. All right. Uh, has he ever been granted any restraining orders or protective orders against you? Okay. Can you off the wall? Is there connection? You know, I think they both have people in the rooms with them. They yeah. do. And you both are grown adults and you don't need anyone to give you any testimony. You were there. They weren't. Has he been granted any restraining orders or protective orders against you for him being the victim of any family violence from you, Miss Williams? No, ma'am. Okay. Have you ever been arrested regarding any domestic violence towards him? No, ma'am. Okay. How old are the four children? Um, my youngest two will be seven months on the 28th. And okay, my so that means I just need to know their age right now. Not what they're going to be. What are they? Uh, uh, seven months. And then the other ones are one. The other one, they're triplets. The older ones, there is two sets of twins. The older ones are one and the younger ones are seven months. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. One-year-old twins and seven-month-old twins. Okay. All right. Now, Ms. Hood, you may proceed. Okay. Um, Ms. Williams, do you have concerns about... Um, Mr. Mr. Jackson, I'm sorry. Uh, you need to stay your face in your screen. Go ahead, Ms. Hood. Okay. Ms. Williams, um, does Mr. Jackson know where you live now? Yes, ma'am. Do you plan on moving? Yes, ma'am. If you move, would you have concerns about Mr. Jackson knowing where you live? Yes, ma'am. And so because of your, um, due to, based off of the prior um, history of family violence, are you asking the court to grant you a finding of non-disclosure today? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, do you, let's see here, are you asking the court to, um, to name you as the primary conservator who gets to determine a primary residence of the children in Dallas or contiguous counties? Yes, ma'am. And have you and Mr. I'm sorry, have you and Mr. Jackson ever lived together with the children? Together? No, ma'am. Okay, never. Okay. Now, do you know if Mr. Jackson has other children? Mm, oh, no, I don't know. Okay. Um, do you, let me see here. Do you know, do you have any information as to Mr. Jackson's um, income? I don't know anything about him, ma'am. Okay. All right. I think that's it. No, no further questions for this witness, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Ms. Williams, I'm going to put you on mute. And Mr. Jackson, I ask that you unmute for your testimony. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Hood. 
Okay, Mr. Jackson, you um, heard Ms. Williams' testimony regarding the incidents of family violence. Do you do you disagree? I disagree 100%. Do you recall the incident um, where well, she's alleging you went up to her employment place of employment and you um, hit one of the one of her co-workers? Judge Evans, Ms. Hood, I didn't hit anybody. I didn't hit anybody. She's a woman. She can pick up the phone and call and say whatever she want to say. And it's going to be heard. I didn't touch anybody. Nobody, man. Did it, was you to it was Valentine's Day. I was getting my kids something to eat. And I had them on, on Valentine's bag just full of stuff. I didn't know that she worked there. I have never seen her with a job. I ain't know that she worked at Waterbury. I didn't hit nobody. I got a violent person. Nothing. She makes threats, and she don't want nobody to say nothing back. Hold on. So hold up, Mr. Jackson. So that because that was when, what was going to be my question. What was this place of employment? So it was Waterburger. So what yeah, you're saying is you, you were just gone to Waterburger to get yourself something. You weren't going to come to her job for her. Is that what you're saying? Judge Evans, I don't speak to this woman. I don't talk to this hey, woman. Wait, wait, wait. Listen no. to what I'm asking. You're saying I was just a customer. It just coincidence that she worked there. You didn't know that she worked there. I swore to God on my life, I would give okay. my kids something to eat. So, question Although you didn't know she worked there, did you and mom have words while you were there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so did someone from her job intervene because y'all were having words? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And was, was the police called that day, sir? Yes, ma'am. And were you arrested? Yes, ma'am. What did the police officer arrest you for? Because he picked up the phone and called them. Nothing. Um, I mean, did they, they, what did they, did they say because you assaulted someone, you were trespassing? What was the reason they said they were arresting you for? Terroristic threat. And Terrorist. both sides were making threats. Um, uh, that's, that's what they said you were doing. Okay. All right. Now, are you aware that she was granted a temporary protective order or restraining order? She was? Yes, okay. ma'am. All right. And I have a question. Uh, has she ever been arrested for any family violence towards you? She has, she has uh, like muffed me in my face one time, but there's no point of us calling the police because I'm a man. They're not going to believe her. Oh, she's a man. So I wasn't tripping on that, but she had muffed me in my two face. Wait, two different questions. My very first question was, just because someone's not arrested doesn't mean something didn't happen. My question to you first was, has she ever been arrested for any family violence towards you? That would be no. I don't know her. Okay. So then next, you're saying she has scratched you before in your face, correct? Isn't that what you said? Yeah, but I let it slide, but I don't, listen, so okay. I don't do that kind of stuff. I don't listen next, like that slide. Next, I let it slide. And you, you didn't, know. you don't have any protective orders or restraining orders against her? No, man, I don't. I'm good everywhere I go, Judge Evans. Mr. I Jackson, I have to ask certain things, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. So next questions will be coming from Ms. Hood. Go ahead, Ms. Hood. Thank you. Um, Mr. Jackson, you disagree with um, Ms. Williams being named as the, as the primary conservator who gets to, to determine where the children live in Dallas or contiguous counties? Do you disagree? 100%. Why, 100%. Do you disagree? Why do you disagree with that? Because it's, I lived with them. She told a lot. I was living with them out there and they were living in somewhere far. Allen, Texas. They are disgusting. That house is disgusting. I swear to God, every morning I was getting up, cleaning up for my babies. Well, Mr. Man. Jackson, listen to her question, but I got something to ask you since it was so disgusting. Did you ever report her to CPS? I was told to judge him, but I want my kids to get involved with that. Okay, so have have they always lived with mama? Other than when you lived there, have they always lived with their mom, even though someone else might be living there? Have they always lived with mom? Sadly, yes, ma'am. Okay, Miss Hood, next question. Thank you. Um, and sir, are you you working right now? Yes, ma'am. Where do you work? 
I work at Chicken Express and I have an on job interview in the morning. Okay, where is that job in interviews? That's at Jason's Deli okay. Distribution Center. And and just backing up, so Chicken Express, do you get paid by the hour? How much do you make per hour, sir? Right now I'm making ten dollars an hour. How many hours do you work on average each week? Like I told you earlier, 25 a week. Do you ever get more than 25, 25 hours a week? No, but starting this week, I will be asking for more. Okay. And Jason's Daily just have an interview. You don't have a job offer yet. Is that correct? I'm pretty sure I got the job. You know, I'm, okay. so I'm a hardworking young man. But right now, the only income you have is the, 20, the $10 an hour, 20 hours, 25 hours a week. Yes, ma'am. Do you do you have any other children, biological children, um, or adopted children under the age of eighteen? I have a child on the way. Okay. All right, sir. And um, earlier, I asked you about um, the government medical. Um, do you have access to private health insurance or dental insurance for your four children? Oh, my job stated me that I will have access to all that. So when I get as of now, no, ma'am, but in the future, yes. Okay. And you understand that the state is um, asking the court to order Ms. Um, Williams to, to enroll the children in the government medical plan, correct? I really don't understand about all this stuff. I really don't know. So, I'll Okay, so Mr. It. Jackson, if mommy doesn't have health insurance through an employer and daddy doesn't have health insurance through an employer, the only option is state health insurance, which is Medicaid or CHIPS because the children have to be covered for vaccinations or when they get sick and so forth. So the state is saying you don't have it available. Mama doesn't have it available. So the state is saying we need to have the kids on Medicaid. That's what she's saying. And it's not free. And she's going to ask for a certain amount that would stay with the state from you for the children's health and dental insurance. Okay. All right, Ms. Hood, you may proceed with your next question. Thank you. All right, sir. Um, the state is, you understand that the state is asking that you pay to reimburse um, for the for the um, government medical plan. You understand that, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sorry. Judge, I lost my calculation. Sorry. Okay. All right. Sorry. And, and um, the state is asking that you be ordered to reimburse um, the state at a cost of $98 per month cash medical support beginning um, June 1st, 2023. Do you agree with that calculation? So like, who am I paying that to, Ms. Hood? Am I paying to, like, who am I paying the money to? You would be ordered to, uh, if the court orders um, you to pay child support and, and um, cash medical support, you will be ordered to pay um, that to Ms. Williams, but the, but the 90 the $98 is to reimburse the state for the government medical since neither one of you has private health insurance available. So the state would keep it. Yes. It goes through San okay. Antonio, the state would keep the $98 for the uh, four kids' health and dental insurance, sir. And, and my job, which they have already told me. If you can keep $98, then you can enroll them. Yes. Okay. And then you would keep the $98. It, that's going to be a very good job, though, if you could be $98 for four <laughs> babies for yeah, health enough. and dental. But I don't know. You you might can. Most people can't. But maybe your employer will have great health benefits. OK, go ahead, Ms. Uh, Hood. Thank you. And, um, and you understand the state is also asking that the court um, order that you and Ms. Williams split equally 50-50 any out-of-pocket expenses not covered by the government medical. Yes. Um, and. So wait, so my my court reporter can't take a thumbs up. She gonna need you. To oh stand. yes, ma'am. All yes, right. Ma <laughs> Sorry, Judge. I didn't even think about that. My apologies. All right. And um, and based off of your income, sir, the state has calculated that your child support amount would be two hundred and sixty six dollars per month beginning June first, twenty twenty three. Do you agree to pay two sixty six a month child support? Judge Evans, Ms. Hood, I don't, but I know it's going to happen anyway. So basically, I'm paying to see my children. If you no, ask me how I've seen my paying. children this month? No, you're not paying to see them. I'm going to explain about vis visitation and child support do not go hand in hand. You're not paying to see your children. So 
I'll explain that at the end. But the 266 is for the financial support where lights, water, rent, diapers, uh, daycare, whatever is needed for that uh, month, which is usually the same monthly expenses every month. So I'll explain about child support and visitation momentarily. Her question to you right now, sir, is do you agree that you should pay based on your income 266 per month for uh, your four kids? No, ma'am. But I'm going to say yes. Why not? That's the next question. So why don't you agree? Judge Evans, I'm a hard work. I can take care of my children. By my, oh, I'm the mother. These are my kids. And she's already told me she's gonna take care of another nigga with my kids. Okay, now, now don't me. use don't use derogatory terms. She says she's gonna take care of another person with yes. Them. These okay. are all the threats. Yeah, this is planned and set up. My only mistake, Judge Evans, was not listening to my mama saying put yourself on child support. I don't want my kids in that system. I don't want none of that. Man, I could have gave you that money a month. You don't have to do this. She's only doing this because, like she said. She's going to be taking care of another man with my money. And I'm very upset, Judge Evans. I'm not upset with you, Judge Evans. I'm just upset that I made the mistake of not putting myself on child support. This okay. year alone, I've only seen my kids twice. Okay. Twice. All this right. year. I'm going to address all that. Okay, so he disagrees with that, Miss Hood. You may proceed, Miss Hood. Thank you. And Miss right. Williams, keep your face in the screen. Go ahead, uh, Miss Hood. Okay. Um, Sir, do you do you have concerns about Miss Jackson knowing your address? Who? I'm sorry, Miss Williams. Sorry, do you have concerns about her knowing your address? Oh no. And you did hear her request for non-disclosure. Um, daddy you... good, yes, ma'am. Okay, so you're you're fine with that, okay? Oh yeah, daddy good. I'm so, I'm sorry. Daddy is daddy, good. Okay, I I thought he said that is good. Okay. You're okay. You heard Miss Williams' testimony. She's asking that her address, her her contact information, not be in this court order. Are you okay with that? I am fine with it. Okay, okay. And sir, the state is also asking that you be ordered to put to pay court costs in this matter. Um, What's that? To reimburse the state for filing this case. Um, I, I explain that to okay, you. Okay, thank you. All right, pass the witness, Your Honor. All right. So I'm gonna put Mr. Jackson on mute. Ms. Williams, go ahead and unmute yourself. I got one question for you. Unmute yourself, Ms. Jackson. Have you ever scratched Mr. Jackson in his, I mean, unmute yourself, Ms. Williams. Have Ms. Williams, have you ever scratched Mr. Jackson? Have I ever scratched Mr. Jackson? Uh -huh, in his face. No, ma'am. Have you ever put your hands on him first? No, ma'am. Okay. All right. So I need Mr. Jackson, stop. And I need both of you to listen to me. Both of you are very young and emotional. Both of you have two sets of twins, which is a lot for anyone especially two young people. You both need to press the reset button and calm down. That's not going to be good for the children. Um, I'm going to explain a couple of things and then I'm going to make a ruling. Child support and visitation do not go hand in hand. So this order is going to set the new parameters of how this is supposed to go. Uh, even if he does not pay his child support, he has the legal right to see his child. Miss Williams, if you keep his child or well, children, excuse me, his children away from him, then he can hire his own attorney and file a motion for enforcement. And there's consequences to that regarding uh, visitation. OK, if he fails to pay child support and medical support, you can hire your own attorney and file something as well. There's consequences if he fails to pay child support and medical support. So they do not go hand in hand, although everything will be in the order. Now, uh, Ms. Williams, I wanna see your face when I'm talking to you. So put your face in the screen. Okay. What the court is going to find 
is mutual and Mr. Jackson too. I'm I'm having to repeat myself too much. So if I'm repeating myself, I know you guys are having issues with each other because both of you are grown adults and you should be paying attention to what I'm saying. Nothing else is more important than what I'm saying right now about your four children. I'm going to find mutual family violence, mutual non-disclosure. I'm also, because of that, it cannot be joint managing conservatorship. It has to be sole managing conservatorship because of the family violence. He will have standard visitation with the exchange location as the police department, which will be in the order. I'm going to order that you continue the children on government health insurance and that Mr. Jackson reimbursed the government $98 a month beginning June 1. That $98 would stay with the state for reimbursement. I'm going to order child support of $266 beginning June 1. No retroactive child support, core costs assessed to Mr. Jackson. Now, state of Texas does not audit or regulate how child support is spent. Sometimes people do say things that are very ugly. Everyone has been to the grocery store recently, knows how much clothes cost, lights, rent. There's no possible way that 266 will cover four children. I doubt seriously there'll be one nickel left to spend on anyone else other than her children. So sometimes uh, people say things to get other people's goat and to get them all upset. I can't see where there'll be one extra dime out of 266 to take care of four children. There couldn't be a, a dime left to spend on another man, woman, or dog. She's going to need all the 266 for those four children. Now, that is the court's ruling, and you both will receive a copy of the order. Calm down. Make sure you're focusing on the children for the best interest of the kids. If either one of you disagree with my ruling, you can appeal my decision. You would have to file it yourself or hire your own private attorney. The AG's office only represents the state of Texas and would not assist either of you with an appeal. You both are free to go and have a good day. You can disconnect from the Zoom. Um, um, Judge, if I have a question. No questions for me. You can have a question for the attorney general's office. I get to ask all the questions. You got something for Ms. Hood? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Ms. Hood. Yes. Do I still get to see my children though? Yes. Yes. Good. I ordered that overnight visits. All of that will be in the order. Okay. And you will receive a copy of it in your email today. So what's the overnight visit? Overnight is every other weekend, first, third, and fifth weekends. Friday at six, you're going to go to the police department and pick them up. You'll have them to Sunday at six. You're going to return them then. You're going to have time for uh, summer vacation, spring vacation, rotating holidays, time with them for uh, Father's Day. All of that is in the order. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. And make sure now. Everybody needs to calm down. You you will be exchanging them on the parking lot of a police station with cameras and everything else for a reason. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Everyone be right in in and in order. Okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Have a good day. You're free to go. Thank you, Honor. Bye-bye. It's Judge Dawson back with another legal update. Let's talk marijuana. This is real quick. This is real simple. In Ohio, you are not allowed to smoke marijuana. You can have it medically, and that medical marijuana does not include rolling up a joint and driving in your car. So if you are pulled over by a police officer and he or she smells marijuana, that is probable cause because regardless of whether you have a license to smoke or the doctor's excuse to smoke, look, that doesn't mean actual smoking. It doesn't matter if you have a license to use medical marijuana from your doctor, because if you are smoking it, that is not included and you will pay the penalty. Look, don't shoot the messenger. I love being a judge, but I hate seeing you get in trouble. Let's go. Williams, stay true.